So now we know how to write equilibrium expressions. We have a general idea of what it means to be at equilibrium. We have a general idea of what the KEQ value would tell us. If it's greater than one, less than one, what does that mean? So now let's see a couple of mathematical examples. So it tells us here uh, that this reaction uh, between carbonic acid and water takes place at 25 degrees. It gives us some concentration numbers. One thing that I wanted to mention, uh, if a reaction takes place at 25 degrees, you will might see this in some practice problems where they give you a temperature. Um, the K values that you calculate are temperature dependent. All reactions are either endothermic or exothermic. They either absorb heat energy from their surroundings or release heat energy to the surroundings. And because of that, if you run reactions at different temperatures, it's going to upset that balance, that equilibrium. And so you might, your tipping point might be a little bit different, where you might have more reactants or more products depending on what temperature you run the reaction at. So just to make you aware, if you see a temperature given to you in a problem, you don't have to do anything with that number. But just to make you aware that if you saw this exact same reaction here run under different temperature conditions, you might get a different K value. So let's see. Uh, it tells us to write an equilibrium expression for that reaction and then solve for the KEQ. So our equilibrium expression, we're going to do products over reactants. Our products are H3O plus, which is aqueous, so it would have a molarity, and that bicarbonate ion, H3O, HCO3 minus, also aqueous. We'd put that over our reactants, H2CO3. But I'm not going to include water since water is a liquid and it can't have a molarity. In this balanced equation, all the coefficients are just imaginary ones, right? One, 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 one. And so we don't have any exponents in this equilibrium expression. We would go and just substitute in the numbers that it gives us here. So it tells us that the H, H3O plus concentration is 1.19 times 10 to the negative fourth. And I'm going to leave off the units of molarity. Since equilibrium expressions don't have units, they're just numbers. They just, depending on if it's greater than one or less than one, it'll tell you if it's reactants or products favored. And so uh, you don't have to worry about the units there. Our HCO3 minus is also 1.19 times 10 to the negative fourth. And then we would divide that by the H2CO3 concentration, which they tell us is 3.3 times 10 to the negative second. If you go to plug that into your calculator, you should get 4.3 times 10 to the negative seventh. So it asks us, do you think the forward or reverse reaction is favored under these circumstances. And how do you know? Well, because our KEQ is much less than one, 4.3 times 10 to the negative seventh, that's a really tiny number. So what that means is it looks kind of like this scenario here, where we have lots of uh, our reactants and very little products have formed. And so we would say that this is a reactants favored reaction, or you might hear it called that the reverse reaction is favored. And if you think about it from that uh, dueling beakers demo perspective, it's saying that you have lots of reactants, very little product, once equilibrium has been established. And you can see that in the molarities themselves because the molarities of your products are to the negative fourth power and yet the molarity of your reactants is to the negative second power. The products are much smaller.